reveal of my daughter's secret. Well, no more. It is time for you to witness the true terror of the Antichrist. The horror of my offspring. The undeniable evil that will destroy what's left of your souls. Behold, pitiful maggots, the fearsome face of darkness. Evelina. My little pony, I used to wonder what friendship could be. My little pony, until you said that magic with me. Technical Look difficulties. Keep it on the refrigerator, please, please, please. Be back in oh, My little pony. My princess of pestilence, what's wrong with you? This isn't the little hell spawn I raised. Fluttershy loves you. What is this fecal matter you call Fluttershy? And what's all this talk of friendship and love and kindness? Friendship is magic, Daddy. Get me my wife on the phone! Hello, Kim Kardashian. What in the hell have you done to our daughter? Look, all I know is that all that TV you've been showing her has resulted in her spinning her head and puking ecto cooler. That's what she's supposed to do. She's the seed of evil. So I decided to show her some more age appropriate programming, like My Little Pony, oh. Care Bears, oh. Dora the Explorer, oh. Bratz. Okay, that's not too bad. And Thomas the Tank Engine. You whore of no virtue! One more outbreak like this and I'll take away your artificial husband. Actually, that's fine. I think the one you gave me is broken. Well, no matter. It'll take something much more potent to get our little girl back to normal. Like what? Oh, I created something long ago. A children's film so frightening and so disturbed that no child could watch it without being scarred for life. Bring me, Son of the Mass. I got rid of it. What? I thought it'd be too scary for her, so I threw it into the human world. Cerberus has nine balls! You threw it into the human world? Mankind is not ready for something so depraved. God help the poor soul who comes across that nightmare of sadism. Don't worry. I put it somewhere where nobody would look. Well, if it's in a public garbage can, it must be worth reviewing. Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. We all remember the mid 90s comedy The Mask. One of the first films to work in the growing popularity of computer effects with a more cartoony nature as opposed to threatening. It was a decent flick, with the mask character for the kids and Carrie's straight man routine for the adults. And on top of that, it made a lot of money. So much so that a sequel had been in the works for eons. It was mentioned in interviews. $10 million for doing The Mask too online forums, there was even a Nintendo Power contest for it. Yeah, didn't that turn out to be a great prize? Wait years later for a contest you forgot you entered to get dragged to a set that has no Jim Carrey, no Cameron Diaz, even the dog I think was friggin' dead by this point. But hey, at least we have Randy from Scream! Here's your refund. Where the mask had a leaning towards kids and adults, Son of the Mask is most definitely a kid's film. Even the advertisements show pretty much nothing but the dog and baby scenes. But it's not only a half-ass sequel without half the asses of the original cast, it's a downright strange, freaky little drive into someone's poisoned outlook as to what family entertainment is. It's a miserable experience that I'm sure you want to see me go through. Well, if I'm going, I'm taking you with me! Run, Son of the Mask! So we start in Edge City, where the first film left off. We enter a museum that literally has the only cast member from the last movie, Ben Stein. 
and seriously. Was it even worth getting him? It's like making Ghostbusters 3 and the only cast member you bring in is the lamp from scene 22. Though, to be fair, the lamp would give a much more stunning performance than Stein. Who's that ugly guy? That's Loki, Norse god of mischief. And Loki's ultimate tool of mischief was this. The mask. So just as he's talking about Loki, what a kawinky dink! Loki himself appears, played by Ellen Cumming, who's almost as silly looking as the Avengers Loki, but not quite. This is a fake! Yes, but it's a good fake. Ow. And you're about to see the number one problem with this film. What? What are, what are you doing? This is one of many shit-your-pants disturbing images. Granted, anything dismembering Ben Stein is usually a plus, but I'd rather be able to watch it as opposed to run out of the theater in my urine-soaked khakis. So the real mask is in the river just outside of Fringe City, which is so similar to Edge City you'll be asking yourself why the fuck didn't they just keep it in Edge City, and is picked up by the not-dog from the first movie yet looks so identical to him so that the kids can see the trailer and say, Oh look, even the Jack Russell Terrier wanted more money than they were willing to shell out. But thankfully they found other performers who were willing to take less, like Jamie Kennedy, who I swear has set his acting to permanent nasally whine. I know you're upset, okay? Slow down, you know I can't run and apologize at the same time. Can I ask you one question? Look at all this stuff. I can't go as this. Even when he's talking normal, it sounds like he's whining. Honey. Come here. Because? And they say, what does your daddy do? Who's a fish? On top of that, he falls into that common category of badly written characters, of the overreacting man-child who never listens, never cares, and yet somehow gets an over-understanding, bland, underwritten hot chick. Why just look at what goes through his mind when somebody says baby. It's a boy. And a girl. Twins? Girl. 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 Boy. Right there, there's the poster for your movie. That'll get the kids coming in. Can see Son of the Mask, a family picture. I'm not saying I don't want to have a baby. I'm just saying I don't want to have a baby right now. So while Jamie doesn't want to spend all that time and attention on a kid, like he clearly fucking does for his dog. Seriously, even Gromit doesn't have as much dog-related shit in his room. We get our first look at what the hell? No! <laughs> Rip Yosemite Sam Winkle. Actually, that's Bob Hoskins as Odin. Probably thankful for his retirement whenever he pops this movie in. That mask has caused enough mischief and malfeasance among the mortals. This is your mess, and you will clean it up. Arthur, King of the Britons, your knights of the round table shall have a task to make them an example in these dark times. Good idea, O oh Lord. Of course it's a good idea. So Jamie works at an animation studio, which happens to be hosting a Halloween party. Seeing how his costume got ruined, he grabs the mask his dog found, and... I'll give you one sanity-tormenting guess what happens. Oh my god. It's like they made DNA syrup out of the Jolly Green Giant and Conan O'Brien. What? What? This is the part where you did. So he torturously lightens up the party. At long last lovers arrive, but I ain't got them alive. You're too good to be true. Can't take my eyes. Can't take my eyes off of you. Yo. So, it'd be one thing if he stuck his STD ridden dick in just one musical style, but this asshole decides to ruin not two, not three, not four, but five different musical styles. And each one is worse than the last. I love you, baby. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. Okay, can you just tell everybody to take five steps back away from the wide-angle lens? Because you can't really enjoy the choreography when your face is as close to the camera. You too good to... Oh, yeah. Can you see all the dancers behind me? Aren't they great? At last long lovers arrive, I thank the Lord I'm alive. You God, he looks like an alien horse trying to French me. At least the first mask knew Jim Carrey's face was scary enough from a distance. It didn't need to face hump the camera every chance it got. I love you, baby. It's an end if it's fine, all right. My God, it's still going. I swear, this thing goes on for what feels like a fucking eternity. And it just keeps getting... 
getting worse and worse. Hello, this is Vanilla Ice. Save this movie! This is the part where you boogie. This is the part where you dance. So mutant ninja Archie goes home, gets in bed with his wife, and makes... as Cuban Pete would put it. Chick -chick -boom, chick -chick -boom. And it turns out the next day the boss of the studio, played by Stephen Wright, yeah, I can't wait to see the excitement he brings to the role, says he wants to make a cartoon series based on his character. This has potential. I mean, not to be crass about it, but this guy, this could be a franchise character. Granted, we don't make a shitty sequel after the first one. I think we could do something with this. This has that spark I was looking for. Yeah, I'm talking about a cartoon series that has Rob Paulson as most of the characters and will focus on slapstick humor that should be funny, but mostly come off as just awkward. Uh, short-lived cartoon series. But his wife has some big news, too. I think I might be... Pregnant. Yes! And you think Bella's pregnancy was freaky? Take a look at this shit. <laughs> and half her insides would be powder. But let's not ruin this potentially unfunny joke. Ah, it's a boy! Ah. But the big day comes and Jamie says hi to his happy little accident. I'm your dad. <laughs> Remarkably awkward segues? <laughs> so Odin possesses the body of another person and tells Loki that a child has been born from the mask. Find the baby and you will find the mask. No, it's clearly Rainbow Dash. Get out of there! Where do you find these people? Is that your dad? Tell him I blame him for that shitty abomination of a third season. Dad, CR blames you for the entire third... Where are we going? Come on, I'm gonna show you an evil worse than Hasbro. Ooh. this again. We cut to a scene where Loki is trying to find the baby, disguised as a... Okay, okay, we're getting through this. A creepy, goddamn scary looking concoction of hell. I mean, guys, seriously, this is an appealing image for kids? It's like the Statue of Liberty sneezed out the Honey Nut Cheerios bee. While Jamie reads a book clearly the screenwriters didn't read, we find it's not so easy when babies take care of babies. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? He almost fed him broken glass. A common everyday mistake of your everyday likable hero. Or even better, when the wife has to go out of town for a week for her job, the unbelievably likable way he takes responsibility for his child. Okay, let me tell you in great detail why this scene isn't funny. You see... <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, seriously, what is with the imagery in this movie? It's fucking terrifying! I mean, I forget, is this the sixth or seventh level of hell? I haven't read Dante in a while, but I know this is in there. He couldn't have forgotten something as horrifying as this. Come on, say dada. 
mother. Oof. Oh, while we're on the subject of scaring the shit out of people, you might be wondering, why is the baby so concerned about scaring his father to where his wide-angle lens can't obnoxiously stretch any further? Well, it's because he wants him thrown in a mental hospital! Why? I don't know! I have no friggin' idea! It's explained about as well as why the dog wants to kill the baby! Oh, yeah, did I forget to mention that? The dog gets the mask, looks like an R. Crumb drawing of cancer, and tries to kill the baby! Now, to its credit, they explain this a little bit by showing he wants to be the center of attention again. But, yeah, this comes out of nowhere, too! No build-up at all! I mean, is the dog looking at the baby here supposed to symbolize that he doesn't like him? Is that what you were trying to convey? How would we guess that? Everything else is shot so weird and over the top that the only thing being conveyed is the night terrors you're gonna have tonight! Yeah, for a movie that doesn't know the definition of the word subtle, you don't really explain these two things very well! The dog wants to get rid of the baby. Why? Two second image of a cartoon that actually looks more realistic than the effects you're throwing at us. Oh, and I'm not kidding. The effects when the dog is trying to get rid of the baby and the baby so cleverly outwits him is some of the worst animation you'll ever see. I mean, worse than baby geniuses. I know I can't take that back, but I'm standing by my words. It looks worse than baby geniuses. The Monty Python cartoons look more three-dimensional. And Lord knows, this could benefit from some British nudity. And once again, the images are creepy. They are so fucking creepy. It looks like every second it's on, the movie is trying to jump out and kill you. Look at the baby's face. It looks like something Gollum threw up and animated. Oh, and speaking of which, here's another fun image. Rather than have the eyes just stretch out like normal cartoon eyes do, let's have them literally pop out of their skulls, leaving two black vacant holes where the most expressive part of the face should be. Hang this picture over your baby's crib tonight. Family fiction. It's scary. It's really scary. I mean, could this movie throw any more horrendous imagery at us? Would you like some thin chocolate? I'm sorry, I don't mean to call, but you're just the only decent good person I can think of to solve this, and I... I think my DVD is possessed! Santa Claus! Oh! Santa Claus! Oh, 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 oh. No, Santa Critic. Claus. There are a lot of bad movies out there, I assure you. That doesn't necessarily mean it's possessed. <laughs> but it's called Son of the Mask, and I just don't... <gasps> Son of the Mask! Hello? Hello? Is it secret? Is it safe? Santa Christ, what are you doing? Shh, shh, shh. Hold out your hand, critic. It's quite cool. Ah! <laughs> no, maybe not. This is the one DVD, forged in the fires of hell and now set loose upon the world. One of two things must happen. Either you must return it to its master, or you must finish watching it all the way through. Why don't you take it? No. I really want you to take no, it. No, please take it. There was Just absolutely no way I'm going to touch a thing with a ten foot ball. I'm giving it to you. Please take it off my hands. I'm sick of looking at it. It's brought me so much misery. I mean, there's not a name for it. Don't tempt me, critic. Understand, critic. If you gave me this DVD through me, it would wield a power too great and terrible to imagine. Wow. Because it's so evil, it would totally consume you. No, it would just be really fun to use indiscriminately. No, you have a bit of a dark side. Critic, you must finish this DVD. I wish this piece of shit had never come to me. Oh, so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for us to decide. You were meant to find the DVD, and therefore you were meant to suffer. 
meant to go through the sort of incredible psychological pain that no force on Earth could match. That is a very encouraging thought. No! That's not a very encouraging thought! In fact, that's about as far away from an encouraging thought an encouraging thought could get! Well, that's all I got. Here, have gremlins. Santa Christ! Santa Christ! We all love Santa Christ! Thanks! Thanks a lot! Let me know if you want to more Lord of the Rings anytime! Why was he here? So, Jamie tries something different for a change, actually being a good father, by at the very least changing the kid's diaper. Uh... Why are you making me think about a baby with three penises? What twisted pig shit does that? Family oh. pig shit. So Loki finally finds the baby and tries to force them to tell him where the mask is. Prepare to feel my true power! Once again, you really gotta admire his fashion sense. Must be an homage to when Kiss performed on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> but it's okay, because the baby likes his dad now! Yep, right the fuck out of nowhere again with no goddamn explanation! And Odin possesses Jamie's body to tell Loki he's fed up. You are hereby stripped of your immortal powers and forever banished to the land of mortals. <laughs> So he's immortal now, which doesn't add up because the baby does all this stuff and he survives it somehow. But what makes even less sense is Loki is stripped of his powers just so he can convince Odin literally in two scenes later to give him back. Yeah, just two scenes later, it's like a couple minutes. Meaning there was no point to take the powers away except to make the movie go even longer. Because, yeah, that's what I need, this freaky as fuck movie to go even longer. Let's celebrate with more creepy ass imagery! You. Is that you? No, you idiot. Ew. Guess who? God, it's bad enough we have the Schwarzenegger baby from Junior. Can you imagine showing those two back to back? Don't show those two back to back! <laughs> So Loki takes the kid, saying if he doesn't get the mask back soon, he's keeping it. This leads to a delightful moment where Jamie thinks his wife returned home is Loki and thus beats the loving bejesus out of her. <laughs> Family picture. So they find the mask and decide to do a trade, but wouldn't you know it, in the less than three minutes of screen time, Loki decides he likes the kid now and wants to keep him forever. Right, yeah, I've like, oh, oh, gone attached. But the always popular crotch shot... <laughs> get the mask out of his hands and back onto Jamie. <laughs> Honey, I think it's time we trade up. <laughs> so they work their way into the Charlie Sheen mobile. Actually, to be fair, that car is fucking awesome. And drive on over to the final showdown. And here he is! Oh, do you turn your wide-angle lens down?! You've had it pushed to maximum since frame one! And Loki said, let there be a brick wall! Nope. And there was! <laughs> now, why didn't they make a toy out of that? It's such a charming, delightful image, I'm sure kids would flock to- DON'T SHOW IT AGAIN! So they decide they're evenly matched and figure the best thing to do is let the baby decide where he goes. Baby, baby. Alvin? I'm your real dad. Come on, you little devil, let's play. I'm just the mother, so clearly I have no say in this. Alvin. 
If I don't look at it, it can't hurt me. If I don't look at it, it can't hurt me. I love you. So his CG mouth chooses his father. Again, the mother, I guess, weighed no part in this decision. And we even get some family bonding with Loki and Odin. I don't know how things work in the God world, but you're his father. He's your son. And even if you banish him, he's still gonna be your son. Well, come on, son. Let's go home. Okay? Okay. Godspeed. Well, gee, if only Jamie Kennedy were there in the Avengers. I'm sure things would have gone over much better with Loki if he was around. There is nothing more important in this entire universe than your relationship with your family. So you might as well get things right now. Jamie Kennedy, Nordic God Psychiatrist. So everything seems to be great now. Heck, Jamie even has a new idea for a TV show. A baby and a dog competing for Dad's attention. I love it. Where did you get the idea? The idea just came to me. Yeah, that does sound like a huge hit TV show, doesn't it? I did have this other dumb idea about Japanese kids collecting pocket monsters to defeat evil, but this, this is really gold. Thank God the evil is over. You remember how Tarsum directed The Cell, a poorly made movie that dived into the mind of a serial killer? Well, Tarsum got it wrong. This is the poorly made movie that dives into the mind of a serial killer! It just forgot to mention the serial killer part! Not only is the movie horribly written, awkwardly acted, filled with lame as hell effects, and using way too much goddamn wide angle lens, it is scary! Scary, 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 scary! I feel unclean. I mean, I can destroy this movie all I want, but it will never get rid of the images that it has planted in here. They will haunt me forever. Nobody should ever have to see the terrifying terror that this movie produced. And they're not going to if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> From hell's heart, I throw you the fuck out. <laughs> Oh my god, it's playing again. It's going over and over and over. Oh my god, can't somebody stop it? Can't somebody stop it? Stand back, critic. Santa Christ! I'll handle this. <laughs> you shall not play. I am a servant of the secret Oscar, wielder of the thumbs of our lord. CGI shall not avail you. Film of boredom! Go back to the cutting room. You shall not play! How many times have you done this? Once. Including now. Here. Have Game of Thrones. Ah! Ah, yup. Another typical viewing. T-Boy! Santa Christ. <laughs> How's it going, my man? Oh, not bad at all. You? Oh, not bad. Just picking up a movie for my dog. <laughs> Hello, little Evelina. Hello. So, still trying to take over the world with that little Twitter invention of yours? Hey, tell me it's not making people dumber. <laughs> tell me it's not making them easier to conquer. Oh, well, everything seems to be in order here. Give my best to the missus. Why, I never do. <laughs> <laughs> what a character. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's so blasphemous. Come on, honey. Oh, please! Please kill me! It's the only sensible thing to do after showing me those horrible, horrible images! Please! Death is the only salvation! What do you think, kiddo? Should I kill him? Nah, I think it's crueler to leave him alive. That's my girl. You do your daddy proud. Anyway, they tried that before. Didn't go over very well.
I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it. Because it'll never go away! Now, behold my pitiful parasites. The true depths of darkness. My little pony! I used to wonder what friendship could be! My little pony! <laughs> That's my girl. Say dada. Mother.